Enoch Lutsu is a surgeon in a hospital in Malawi. He works long and hard to help the 100 plus patients in his care. He often has to improvise because medication and instruments are in short supply. Malawi is one of the world's poorest countries. The city of Zomba, south of the capital Lilongwe, has a relatively well-equipped hospital. Dr. Lutsu and his team receive aid from Germany, but they still can't always give their patients the care they need. Edwina Chabuera is pregnant, and Dr. Lutsu and his assistant are concerned. She has a tumor on one leg and needs surgery. Yeah, the risk is the pregnancy will go with surgery. So, what can you do now? We need to know what it is. Eh? Mm. We did the excision last, last year. This is a recurrent tumor. Unfortunately, they were not able to pay for the histology. So we didn't know the, uh, what are we dealing with. Looks like a sarcoma. So we need the histology. Once we have a confirmation it's cancer, the best, I think, is to amputate the leg. Communicating bad news to patients is an all-too-frequent part of Dr. Lutsu's routine. He makes the rounds of the wards twice a week. He and his assistant devote special attention to the more difficult cases. Every patient they're able to release is another success, such as this woman who came in with ulcerated abdominal muscles. Another patient has just been admitted with a suspected rectal tumor. What kind of problem do you have? I have blood in my stool. When did that start? It started when I had the baby. The history is she gave birth in March. Are there any changes in bowel habits prior to passing stool? Not before I was pregnant. Do your intestines make any noise before a bowel movement? I had diarrhea and sometimes constipation. How often do you have these problems? Quite often. Is this your only illness? There's nothing else. He also asks about her HIV status, which is negative. Dr. Lutsu never manages to see all his patients in one day. And the ward is almost always overcrowded. But he still takes time for every case he can. Three procedures are scheduled for the operating room the next morning. That might easily involve three improvised solutions if the required equipment is missing. The first patient is barely three months old. She has hydrocephaly, a genetic defect that occurs relatively frequently in Malawi and involves an accumulation of fluid in the brain. The assistants have all had basic medical training and continue to learn on the job. The more experienced among them can even operate on their own. An operation won't help this defect. A tube will have to be run from the brain case down to the abdominal cavity. That will drain the fluid off straight into the abdominal cavity and take the pressure off the baby's head. Testing the tube. Scissor. You have another scissors? No, 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 dissecting. It's there. You only have this one. Okay, do you have a big plum? Uh, no, but let's just continue. We'll see. Mm. 
nice. Caesar. So we have just improvised something. This time, all that was missing were the right sized scissors. The procedure went well. We are happy. No. So we, we have, which one have we done? We have done this one. Okay, now the next is uh, this one. This one. Then we'll take the bowel suction. As the only surgeon here, Dr. Luzu shoulders a lot of responsibility. He teaches the assistants as much as he can. There are precious few fully qualified doctors here. Yeah, mainly what we need is more anesthesia because the anesthetists are short in number, so we don't really operate to the full capacity of this theater. Dr. Lutsu is confronted with shortages of equipment and medicine on a daily basis. As you want to do your job, you always want to have something that you need to do the job, yeah? Yeah. handy. But sometimes it's so difficult, you don't have this, you don't have that. That sometimes is frustrating. Pay, obviously, is low, very low. So it's also frustrating. He earns the equivalent of around 450 euros a month, an extremely low wage for a qualified surgeon. At lunchtime, Dr. Luzu has to pick his daughter up from daycare before returning to the clinic. It's the only break he gets from the hospital routine. Dr. Luzu is the first surgeon to complete his studies and training entirely in Malawi. And he's the only consultant surgeon at the Zomba Central Hospital. My interest was uh, to be an engineer. But then the interest changed when uh, sometime around the same period. Uh, my father used to have this book called Modern Ways to Health. That was the title. So I just took it and started uh, reading it. So the stories I would see about surgery got my attention. Then I got very interested. I said, ah, this is how you really can help others, yeah? In 2016, at age 37, Dr. Lutsu moved his family to Zomba. As a state employee, he had to go where he was assigned. He hopes to work in the capital, Lelongwe, someday, although he likes his work here. Zomba's hospital is one of the few central state clinics in Malawi. It serves a population of nearly four million people. The most complicated cases are sent here. There is no charge for treatment. The lines outside the admissions office just keep growing, while the nurses try to assign the patients according to urgency. There's still no casualty department. An average of 15 patients are admitted here every day. The mortality rate at the hospital is high, close to 20% for some of the wards. It's never easy for Enoch Ludzu to take when nothing can be done to help the patients. Sometimes the, the problems are beyond you. For example, somebody needs blood, there is no blood, has an HB of 4. What do you do? There isn't much you can do about it. So sometimes the system fails you. Sometimes maybe you can do something. The way you can do something, that's where we try as much as possible to improve mm. on. New hospital facilities or extension buildings are financed almost exclusively by non-governmental organizations. A small casualty department is finally being built with funding from the Zomba Hospital Project in Germany. The association has been supporting the clinic for the last 15 years. Its chairman, Olaf Bach, does what he can to help Dr. Lutzu. It's a typical history of typhoid. Eh? Febrile illness, you think it's malaria. Sometimes the malaria may be positive, sometimes not. You treat malaria, you don't improve, then you develop abdominal pains, which gets worse and worse. Typical typhoid. Eh? The two men work together to try to increase the quality of care in the surgery unit. Olaf Bach comes to Zomba twice a year for six weeks at a time and oversees the transport of obsolete medical equipment from Germany. German doctors and students also come to help at the hospital. 
Olaf Bach is head surgeon at the University Clinic in Jena. It's fine, Regina. I think it's okay here. And I just open a little bit down here. And she should go for dressing tomorrow. That's good enough. Can we, Danny? Good, bus, that's good. That's good enough. All right. Move the fingers. Ah, Kwambiri. Kwambiri. It's been around 20 years since Bach first came to Malawi as a young doctor. Back then, he also worked for a time here in Zomba. I would not be the person I am without Malawi. I uh, became shaped as a doctor, as a surgeon here. I founded my academic career by malaria research here. So I would not be the, in the position I am in Germany now financially and professionally without. So I own something to this country. They help us a lot in terms of equipment and uh, other materials, uh, which we usually lack. And they are also uh, transferring skills to uh, us here, uh, which is very good. And uh, I think we are benefiting a lot from, from this cooperation. And I wish it continues. Enoch Lutsu is aware of how much he and his clinic in Zomba need the aid from abroad. Like his commitment, it's indispensable to providing the patients here the care they need and ensuring they receive treatment with dignity.